When we moved to Fairfax County in 2013, the only information we knew was that Fairfax County had great public schools and the cost of houses was higher than our hometown in New Orleans. There are so many other things we should have considered before uprooting our entire family and making the journey to Northern Virginia. In this video, I'm going to show you five reasons why you should not move to Fairfax County. This county is a transient area that's roughly the size of Rhode Island. And the population here has been steadily growing over the last few years with thousands of people relocating to the area every single year. Like everywhere else, you can find pros and cons to living in the area. Today's video is just my opinion about a few things that could be deal breakers for some people. For me, these five things I mentioned in this video weren't enough to cause me to stay in New Orleans and now my family has been here almost eight years. Be sure to stay until the end to hear the reason why not to move to Fairfax County that I've yet to see on any other YouTube channel. Now let's start the show. Hi, my name is Abraham Walker, your favorite Northern Virginia YouTube real estate agent, where I do the research so you don't have to. If you're thinking about moving or relocating anywhere in the Northern Virginia area, use the link in the description to fill out your perfect home questionnaire. We will meet online and we'll discuss any questions that you may have about moving to Northern Virginia. Also feel free to check out our relocation playlist. You can click the link right here or there will be a link in the description. Enough about me. What are the reasons not to move to Fairfax County? Living in Fairfax County means you will need to get used to the traffic and let me tell you, it sucks. Drivers in the DC metro area see more than their share of road congestion. In fact, they spend more time sitting in traffic than anyone else outside of California. Nationwide, a commuter spends on average of 54 hours a year stuck in traffic compared to 102 hours in the DC metro area. That's the third highest amount in the nation. Because of the steady job growth and the consistency of the federal government, delays for commuters have been growing at a pretty steady clip year after year. Rush hour in DC lasts from approximately 6 to 9 a.m. and from 4 to 7 p.m. During rush hour traffic, it's best to avoid I-95 and Route 66 altogether. Highways such as 295, 395, 495, and 270 are popular alternatives. Traffic is incredibly hectic between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. Monday through Thursday, as well as daily from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Traffic is so bad in this area that some people elect to go to work at 5 and 6 a.m. just to make it to work before traffic and to leave before everyone else. There's also a spike in traffic from noon to 5 p.m. on on weekends. That's right, we have weekend traffic and we're not even a beach town. You don't want me to begin to talk about how upset that makes me. When you're commuting in this area, a 20 minute trip should take you about 45 minutes. Now there is a way that you can reduce your commute by using the HOV lanes, also known as the Easy Pass lanes. This is for high occupancy vehicles. These lanes run on Route 66, 395, 495, and 95. However, the price of these tolls can can get ridiculous. The highest recorded toll on Route 66 is 40 plus dollars. You can't avoid these costs by carpooling with three or more people. You can also try slugging. Slugging is unique to the DC area. It's actually where you get in a stranger's car and they take you to a predisclosed, predetermined location. To learn more about slugging and other things that make this area unique, check out my video called Real Things Locals Say About Fairfax County. The link will be right here. Number two on our list is something that may be unique to me. It's a pet peeve of mine, but where I'm from, this is normal and it's everywhere. But then when you come here and you find out that it's rare or it's uncommon, it takes some time to get used to. So let's talk about it. Other than in commercial areas, many neighborhoods in Fairfax County lack sidewalks. You heard me, sidewalks. When did sidewalks become a luxury? I don't know. Since I came from a city with sidewalks everywhere, it blows my mind that paved sidewalks are rare or even need to be mentioned. It's perfectly normal for residents to walk in the street if they want to get around on foot, which I find astounding given that this place is one of the wealthiest jurisdictions in the country. That's right, if you look on any list, there are parts of Northern Virginia, including Fairfax County, that are on on the most expensivest places to live 
in America. In some neighborhoods, you'll see people walking their dogs, talking to neighbors, and jogging in the street. Just picture someone with an advanced degree that makes six figures a year holding a conversation next to a passing vehicle. It's not even uncommon to see young children playing amongst cars. You'd be mistaken if you're thinking that this is solely a residential issue. There are also some major intersections with sidewalks, especially in the Mosaic District and near Tyson's Corner. Now, I understand that adding sidewalks is a serious financial undertaking, but if sidewalks are important to you like they are to me, keep this in mind when you're looking at homes in an area with limited sidewalks because it is unlikely to change at all. Let's pause on this list a quick minute. If you have any questions, now would be a great time for you to drop them in the comment section. Type FFX if you already live in Fairfax County right now. Also, while you're in the comment section, list what you dislike the most about living in Fairfax County. Maybe you can help somebody before they move to this area. Have I mentioned something that was on your list yet? Stay tuned, we still have a few more to go. One more thing before we continue with the rest of the video. I make these videos to answer any questions that you may have or answer any questions that my clients may have about relocating to this area. You can consider my videos as an informal interview where you get to know me before we work together. If you plan to move soon, don't be shy. Reach out to me so I can assist you in finding your next home. The best way to reach out to me is by using the link in the description to fill out the perfect home questionnaire. I know I mention it on every video, but seriously, it's the best way to get in touch with me. After you complete your short survey, we'll meet online virtually and you can ask me anything you want about Northern Virginia. Now back to our show. Next up on our list is real estate. You've probably already heard that housing in Fairfax County is expensive. According to bestplaces.net, it's 136 percent more than the national average. Just how insane the prices are in Fairfax County over the last five years, home prices have increased by 19%. That's right, 19%. Look, that information is great if you're a homeowner, but not the best thing if you're looking to buy a home. Even if you're renting, you can expect to spend roughly 41% more here in Fairfax County than the national average on rent. People often talk about the high cost of living in Fairfax County, which is definitely something to consider. However, according to the U.S. Census, the median income here is around $128,000, which is considerably higher than the national average of $69,000. So when you think about it, it may work out in the end to move to Fairfax County. The second to last reason why you shouldn't move to Fairfax County has to do with something I would say is more of a sensitive topic. Depends on where you are in the conversation will determine how you view this point. For Virginia generally has a humid subtropical climate that experiences all four seasons. Whether this is a positive or negative is up for you to decide. Personally, I like the weather here because I like variety in the seasons. Coming from New Orleans where we really had hot and hotter, this is amazing. It's amazing to live here. Now, this isn't the case for everyone. Everyone doesn't feel this way. Most people will agree that spring and fall in Fairfax County is great. You're going to love it. On the other hand, summers are constantly brutal and winter is unpredictable. Like right now, I'm filming this video in summer and I gotta say, it gets sticky here. Oh my goodness. I sometimes think I'm still back in Louisiana with temperatures occasionally reaching over 100 degrees in summer. Not to mention that since we're close to a body of water, it's hot and humid here as well. Conversely, temperatures drop around the end of November, although the drop seems to come closer to the end of the year over the last few years. Once they drop, things are pretty cold until about mid-March, sometimes even April. That's probably the thing I like least about the weather here. I feel like the cold just linger. It just doesn't leave. And the snowfall is also unpredictable. While it is usually modest at best, every few years we get some type of Armageddon type snowstorm. So what makes that so bad? We rarely get snow, but then when we do get snow, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's just like you're gonna be locked inside for a while. Well, because the snow is so infrequent in this area, and we happen to live in a place where almost no one is from here, and people like me who have never seen snow before are driven in snow, now live here, no one can drive in the snow. That means that every time, and I mean every, you have to deal 
battle with increased traffic on top of horrible traffic conditions I previously mentioned, which leads to lots of accidents. And if that isn't enough, the schools close if one snow flurry decides to enter our atmosphere. School closures can especially be a bummer because the county is enormous. There can literally be no snow in Southern Fairfax County, but schools will be closed because of snow in Great Falls, McLean, or other northern parts of the county that are more than 25 minutes away. You know, I have one more beef with the weather here, swimming, right? Now, I'm not really big into swimming. I do love the sport and I do like to do it to relax, right? But you come here, you make more money than most of the country. So you think to yourself, you know what? I'm gonna buy myself some luxury items. I'm gonna buy myself a, a swimming pool or I'm gonna get myself pool access. Think again. Think again. Because of our weather, swimming pool season really doesn't start until mid-June because by Memorial Day, the water is still pretty cold. And to add to that nonsense, fall kind of creeps in on us, right? Like slowly over time. So it can actually start to get chilly. No pool terms in like late August to early September. Some summers you can only get eight weeks of solid swimming season before putting your bathing suits up for the next year. This can be frustrating if you have school age kids where you remember that a lot of your memories, the good ones, were next to a pool. Keep that in mind if you're moving from an area where you stay in the pool or beach more than you stay on dry land. I'm talking to you Florida and Arizona people. We've come to the last reason on my list why you may want to think twice about moving to Fairfax County. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I have not heard anyone talk about this last point on any YouTube video. I'm serious here. Allergies may cause you to second guess moving to Fairfax County. The DC metro area ranks seventh highest in Google searches for spring allergies and for good reasons too. It's not uncommon to hear previously allergy free people say they develop symptoms a few years after moving to the DC metro area. My wife, who already had allergies before we moved to the area, her allergies have really gotten worse since moving here in 2013. And my oldest son, he had no history of allergies and now he's developed some symptoms. Ask a few people and you'll hear, that happened to me too or, oh yeah, that's a really common thing. If it's so common, why didn't we know this before we moved here? A common factor in developing new seasonal allergy symptoms as an adult is relocating to a new environment where there's unfamiliar pollen to react to for the first time. If you are relocating from an area where the pollen is similar to the DC area, you probably won't have a problem. Over the spring, which tends to be the most severe season, most allergies are caused by pollinating trees. If your symptoms don't flare up until late spring or into summer, grass pollen is more likely the culprit. And if you're still struggling as we move from summer to fall, ragweed is the nemesis. The region has a great diversity of trees and grasses which flourish over a long growing season. Remember how I mentioned that sometimes it doesn't start to get cold until November? Well, you're welcome. One of the other reasons why allergies might seem particularly severe in recent years is because allergy season is getting longer. Our winter season seems to be getting shorter which means more time being frost free that has led to an even longer growing season for plants that cause allergies. If you already have allergies, then you're probably already familiar with the best over-the-counter treatments. If not, you'll get acquainted soon enough. That's it. Those are the reasons to think twice about moving to Fairfax County. Do you think they are good enough to keep you from relocating here? I don't because I live here and I love it. If you want more information about finding a home in Fairfax County, click the link below to complete your perfect home questionnaire. I'd love to answer any questions you might have about the area. Thanks for watching the show. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.